Just like most things in the body, if we have a lower right shoulder or a lower left shoulder, these two things are not created equally and it will depend on your own individual circumstances to determine what's best for you to address the root cause of this problem. If you haven't seen my right BC video, that's going to do a really good job of explaining more in depth what I'm about to talk about as it relates to this pattern. Because normally people have this presentation where they have a higher right hip and the spine, the lower spine in particular, is biased towards turning towards the right. We have a diaphragm that's bigger on the right side, more fixated attachments to the spine on the right side. And because this diaphragm sits on top of the liver on the right side, which is a heavy organ, now that is going to result in air from the right diaphragm going into the left chest wall and expanding it up while these right ribs stay more depressed and down like that. So we have more of these internally rotated ribs on the right and that's going to pull the shoulder down and forward and these left ribs are externally rotated and turned up like this. So you can kind of see how that's going to put us in this position right here. What we often see on the backside is a more flared or winged scapula on the right side, which is biased towards an internally rotated state of that scapula. The left one is more close to the spine being pulled in here in a more externally rotated position. So these match up with what we're seeing at the rib cage as well. Now, as you can see, as this thing is pulled forward and down, that's going to create more of a concavity towards this right side right here. So we have a tighter right ab wall. This high right hip is playing into it. So what I'm trying to say here is people look at uneven shoulders as if it's a shoulder problem, but we can't separate these two things from each other because they're both feeding into why we have this asymmetrical presentation. So both need to be addressed when we're going to create long-term changes that stick. I think it's helpful to show examples. So here's a client that I've had in the past and he presented with a lot of these issues. He had front right shoulder issues, left upper trap and neck issues. And he was in this right BC pattern. He presented exactly how I would expect. So when I assessed him, he had more limited right shoulder internal rotation and more limited left shoulder external rotation. What shoulder internal rotation is measuring is how much compression or internal rotation is present in these right ribs. The more compressed this front right rib cage is, the less internal rotation is going to be present to the shoulder because that shoulder is being pulled down and forward into this internally rotated compensatory state. So we can't go somewhere we're trying to get if we're already there. What shoulder external rotation is measuring is how much compression is on the backside of the ribs right here. If there is a lot of compression, meaning that the scapula is being pulled closer to the spine and it's unable to move very effectively, shoulder external rotation is going to be limited. The first thing we need to do is be able to open up this rib cage on the right side. And we need to do that in a way that's also going to help expand the back left ribs as well. And the reason why is because if I reach a little bit further with my right hand, I turn myself left. And what that does is that pushes the left ribs further back so we can get more opening of this space on the left side. And that will also allow the right chest wall in particular to expand. If you want to see the full video walkthroughs for every single exercise in this video, you can check the article in the link down below in the description. That's going to have every single exercise, full detailed walkthroughs, and also some more information and visualizations for you. At this point, what we can do now is bring the scapula into a better resting position on the right side so we can pull it closer to the spine. And that will allow it better ability to downwardly and upwardly rotate, go into internal and external rotation. So we're going to facilitate the right low trap and the long head of the triceps which attaches on this lateral border right here to help pull it down. A basic tricep extension activity was all we needed to get started, but then we wanted to progress it to higher levels of shoulder flexion. So we did a banded D2 flexion activity where we got the arm going overhead, which was getting the low trap to work in those upper ranges of shoulder flexion. And also the long head of the triceps was also working to help make sure that the scapula could stay on the rib cage better as they bring their arm overhead. This is the supine resisted diagonal flexion activity from postural Restoration Institute. The purpose of this is to recruit some tricep and low trap and get the shoulder in a good position and open up the chest wall on that same side as well. So to set up, we got a hook line position here where the feet are flat, knees are bent and in line with the hips and also the feet. We've got a piece of tubing here that's not heavy whatsoever or strong whatsoever because we're going to be stretching it out a good bit. We have about a 10 pound resistance here and a relatively narrow grip and you're going to have to adjust it depending on how thick that tubing is and how strong it is but generally you don't want to be feeling your muscles more than about a five ish out of ten here so to start we're going to take that band in the left hand 
and we're going to have a palms up grip on the right, palms down on the left. Now, we're going to start by pushing that band down on the left. That's gonna slightly side bend Trevor to the left, and that should engage his left side abs. And now he's going to pull that arm overhead, maintaining that left reach, and he's gonna get in a position where the thumb is facing down on the right towards the floor, and his arm is now above the level of his shoulder. So in this position right here, he should feel those left abs working with the muscles on the back side of his shoulder blade and also the back side of his arm here, his tricep and low trap. And then he's going to exhale through his mouth nice and full, getting all that air out because we're trying to expand this chest wall with air here. So he's got to maintain those left abs, that left reach and that full exhale. Pause, close his mouth, inhale through his nose and you should feel this right chest wall expand. At this point, I wanted to get him more upright, but I also wanted him to learn how to shift to the left because if we're not thinking about how this pelvis is turned to the right, then we're always going to be limited in our ability to get long-term changes because this underlying pelvis position is still influencing this right BC pattern. So what I did was get him in a standing position, had him do a push down with the band, owning that left stance and getting familiar with what that felt like. And that also helped close off his left side and open up the right chest wall further. So now we're integrating a lot of this stuff together. Now let's talk about what happens when we have a lower left shoulder. When this happens, it is usually an additional layer of compensation and an additional turn in the spine. So what we usually and most commonly see with a lower left shoulder is we still have a pelvis that's oriented to the right and we still have a mid spine that is trying to go left. But then what happens is we have a counter rotation of the spine at T4, which is right here. And that is going to start to go more towards the right side again. So now we have these three twists. You might be asking, why does this even happen in the first place? Well, a lot of people, when they have this really tight, compressed rib cage on the right side, they can't inflate it very effectively. The muscles that are more accessory, muscles of inhalation on the neck are going to go into overdrive to help try to elevate the ribs that they attach on. And that is just a desperate attempt for them to try to get air into their right chest wall. So they use muscles like their scalene to help pull some of the top ribs up but that often results in this happening as well. In Postural Restoration Institute terminology, which is where a lot of these patterns come from, they refer to this as superior T4 syndrome. And sometimes people need more manual therapy approaches and they need to get some hands-on treatment in order for them to open up their ribs in a specific way, which is beyond the scope of this video in particular, because I am not a physical therapist myself, so I have people I refer out to for that. What we can do to help open up the left top ribs in particular is an activity where we're pulling a band behind us because that is going to help facilitate the opening of these top ribs in particular. This is the standing resisted pull with left AFIR from Postural Restoration Institute. The setup for this, we need a light band, preferably with a handle. If not, you can just kind of grab the band and you can keep your palm down. But generally, a handle is going to be good and attached at the lowest point, something like a door frame or a pole, whatever works as long as it's stable. We're going to hold that band in our left hand with our left foot ahead of the right. And we want our right toes in line with our left foot midfoot and then slightly off to the side. So we're about hip width apart. And then what we're going to do is keeping about half or just a little bit more than that of our weight on our left foot, keeping the whole foot flat, we are going to tuck our hips and then turn the hips to the left and we should feel our left outside hip engage as we do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that band and reach it behind us and we need to have that palm face away, keeping about a softball's distance between our humerus arm and our side right here. We should feel the muscles in the back of our left shoulder and our left tricep back of the arm right here engage. Reaching forward with the right arm, keeping the left hip back and we're reaching slightly across the body with the right arm. We're gonna breathe in through our nose, out through our mouth here. Five breath cycles, keeping our eyes up, looking straight ahead the whole time relative to the position of our trunk. Then what we wanna do is get the right neck to relax. And we can do that via opening up these right ribs. 
because these right lower ribs in particular are still probably quite tight. And if we give these ribs an ability to open up, then that neck on the right won't have really a reason to start working in overdrive or keep working in overdrive because it doesn't need to. A position with the head turned to the left side will help facilitate opening of the top ribs on the right. And you can do that like this. So we're gonna get in a supine position with our legs straight. We're gonna hold a weight in the opposite side of the side we're rolling to. So we're rolling right here. We're gonna hold the weight in our left hand. We're just gonna have this right arm hanging out by the side, just chilling, relaxing, bringing up this left leg to about 90 degrees. And now we're just going to roll over to the side, kind of punching the weight up towards the ceiling as we inhale. And then as we exhale, we're going to keep this hand facing down there. As we inhale, we're going to supinate and get the palm facing straight towards this camera right here or the wall over there. Exhale there, inhale here. The important part is that we're keeping our eyes on the bell so that way we can get a head turn towards that side. You don't wanna overly crank your neck, but you wanna make sure that your eyes remain on the bell and you can get a rotation of your neck without it being uncomfortable at all. You can also see a lower left shoulder when someone has a side bend to the left side and a higher left hip. And if this is the case, then I'm going to go off of their assessment measurements to determine if they are in this superior T4 position or if they still have an underlying right BC pattern. At this point, we should have good internal rotation on both sides. And now we can begin to do a little bit more of that underlying right BC work, which still tends to be present after you remove this additional layer of compensation. So you can do your right low trap and right tricep work. You can also help get them to shift over to the left side better. Again, if you wanna see all these exercises in more detail, check out the article in the link down below. Again, if you wanna see more of these exercises in detail, check out the article in the link down below.